I don't think you can disagree with me when I say that is the cutest intro video for a war game. Hello friends, welcome to Root, a game of woodland might and right. Now if you haven't heard of Root, um, I'd probably be pr uh, pretty surprised. Um, in the board game community, it is very well known, uh, widely known, um, and it it started off as a Kickstarter, and they've had a couple Kickstarters since then. I, I love this game. I own the game. Um, I did back the, I think the the last most recent Kickstarter, where where it came with an um, expansion. But I bought the other games um, outside of Kickstarter at the at the local board game store. So um, anyway. It's becoming a, a pretty well-known video game as well uh, as the digital port on um, on Steam, but it's also available on um, iPhones. I'm not sure about Androids, but I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if, if it isn't, then it would be soon. So, um, And it's a cross-platform multiplayer. So if you have it on your iPhone and somebody else has it on Steam, then you can play together, and that's, and that's pretty great. Uh, there are some bugs here and there, I, um, but they, they're working on it. They're pretty uh, diligent on removing some of these bugs. Um, right. I do want to call out uh, the artist for this game is Kyle Farron. You can see his name written here on the, uh, the harmonica here. Um, he did all the art for uh, the board game and the art here as well. So it's it's just phenomenal to, to make a war game look and feel a little childish, but it still holds all the strategy of a, of a normal uh, war board game. Um, so I'm going to jump into the to the tutorial. Um, I've done a couple just because I, I think it forces you to do a couple anyway. Um, but I, it, it was it was nice to kind of learn the uh, controls anyway. So we're going to um, take a look at the the cats. We'll start off with a bit of the basics. It kind of throws you into the middle of a game where some of the things have already happened, and it teaches you how to play root and the mechanics of the the, the game. Welcome to Root, a game of warfare and adventure where four unique factions struggle to control, for control over the vast woodlands. In this scenario, you will be playing as the ambitious Marquis de Cat. Long before they became the military industrial powerhouse they are today, the Marquis, the Marquis uh, came to the forest with a small band of warriors and a few modest buildings. I hear the flapping of wings in the distance. Move quickly to establish your hold on the forest for your, your feathery foes, the eerie, arrive. Doing this, our goal is just to rule five clearings. So this is a clearing, okay? And these are paths that we can follow to move from clearing to clearing. It says, move a warrior into a neighboring clearing to expand your rule. So we want to just move. Here we go. Click on them. And it's showing that from here we can move here uh, to these three locations, but it's, it's saying we want to move here. So we'll move one to there. Each, suit has, uh, each clearing has a suit. So this is the suit of the clearing. Okay. And this is representing with uh, the community of creatures. So this would be a fox clearing, meaning, you know, in the lore of the game, um, that there are foxes living in this clearing. And these are the ones that we need to communicate with uh, for help. When you use the march action, you get to make two moves, so make another move now. This is also showing that we already control it, it, the color is matching the color of our faction, which is orange. We get a second move. We'll move 
move from here to here. Generally, when you do move, you get to choose how many you move. Uh, just for this tutorial, it's it's suggesting it's just uh, speeding things up a little bit. Let's end our turn and rest. We have a big day of building ahead. So this is the next day. Um, your sawmills generate one wood at the start of your turn. Wood is used to create buildings. So here's the wood token that was placed next to the sawmill. So we can build a recruiter to get more warriors into the forest. Select the build button. Choose a clearing to build in. So we want, this is just to create more uh, wood and it costs one wood to build the first, saw, uh, the second sawmill, I guess. We'll build it up here. So there's the price. Oh, sorry, we're building a recruiter. I forgot. This clearing is perfect. Place one wood to build the recruiter. Use the recruit action to place a warrior at each of your recruiter buildings. So there's one here, and then there's one right there. Spread out your warriors to rule more clearings. Um, okay. So we can move out of here to here. We still rule this clearing because we have a sawmill here. So any pieces that we have here um, add to our power or control. So now we own or we control one, two, three, four. Um, let's spread out in this direction. Now we own five. There we go. As I feared, an eerie warrior has seized the nearby clearing. They aren't friendly to outsiders. After three actions, the day has finished for the mighty Marquis. You can see the blue flag here is matching that. Um, We can choose an action. It, our goals now are march your warriors into the clearing occupied by the Eerie to challenge them. Defeat all Eerie warriors. Well, there's only the one. So choose an action. We get three actions now. Okay. Let's recruit so we can get one in this and one here. Um, now let's march. We're going to march from here to here. And then from here to here. Okay, so we're off, we're here now. So now we can fight or battle for our third action. Our warriors will surely triumph over these vile birds. Select battle to fight them off. Battle and then click the faction. In battle, two dice are rolled with sides 0 to 3 to determine hits. The attacker has the advantage, they take the higher die, leaving the defender with the lower one. Each player can deal no more hits than the number of warriors they have in the clearing of battle. So if I was to roll a 2, it would drop to a 1 because it's only 1. There's only one of us. If there were 3 of us and I rolled a 2, then I could uh, deal 2 hits. Okay, so it's going to do it that way. For each hit, an enemy piece is removed from the map, starting with warriors. Total hits are added up and displayed below. So I roll the two, I only have one warrior, so I can only, the, the maximum I can roll is one. Okay. 
There we go. So now we need to destroy a roost. Roosts are... Okay, well, the, beery, the Eerie have built a roost that can recruit more of their warriors. We must attack and destroy it before their flock becomes too strong. Okay. So 3-3, three, three, you can see here now that you can only roll a 1, because we only had 1. Uh, even though we both rolled 3, can't kill 3 of the others because there's only one of us. Uh, so we'll move. We just need to move one Marquee Warrior up to here. And destroy it. Oh, right. Um... I'm just going to skip the other movement and then battle here. Because it's defenseless, we'll always roll a one. It's, it's not explaining that. Okay. So, yeah, I didn't say it, but. Um, well done, you've destroyed the roost, the force is ours for now. So what happened there was the, it was one uh, cat warrior versus zero bird warriors, but there was a, uh, a roost there, okay? So even if it was, even if we rolled zero zero, because it's defenseless, there's no warriors, you get one added to it. It went a little quick there, I just want to make sure that that was understood. Um, but because we rolled a two and a zero, it became... The two became a one, because we only had the one at. And then plus one, because it's defenseless, so we rolled a two. Even though we only had one cat, we rolled, we, we rolled a one and then added one to that. Okay. We'll continue here with the cats, so we get to play some rounds as the cats. The invading Marquis de Cat wishes to exploit the woodland using its vast resources to fuel her economic and military machine. She scores victory points by constructing building buildings in the woodland. In a typical game, ah, in a typical game the first player to score 30 wins. This scenario, let's see if you can get to 12. When you start the game as Marquis de Cat, you place your keep in one of the corner clearings. Now, I generally like to take this clearing as the cats because there are two, in this one clearing, there are two spaces for building, okay? Um, and in, in the other ones, there's only one. I'm not sure why they chose that. I assume to make whoever whoever goes first, in this case the cats, um, will, uh, with these four characters, the cats will always go first. So you always have the choice to go in this uh, corner here. So I'm not sure why they chose to just put two in that one corner. Um, Instead, they could have put two in like this corner and two in that corner, and then you'd have an option. I don't know. It, it just it seems uh, weird to me. But anyway, we'll choose this. Oh, continue. The keep is the cornerstone of your kingdom. Enemies may not build or place pieces in the clearing with your keep, but they can move. So there's a difference between place and move. And in the, in the board game, this makes a lot more sense. But place your keep now it might be it might have been better if they put place in bold and move in bold so that you know those are keywords marquee army greatly outnumbers the other factions you start with a warrior in every clearing except the one in the corner opposite to your keep that clearing is eerie territory so the eerie will start opposite corner that you start. So if I chose this corner, 
the the Erie dynasties would start in that corner. So there goes all of my cats, cat warriors. Finally, you must place one of each building in the clearing with your keep or any adjacent ones. And it's just doing it for me now, I guess. The Eerie have swooped in and built a roost in the empty clearing. It's quite well defended. They start off with six in their, in their clearing. We start out very weak in all clearings. And they start off very strong in one clearing. At the start of daylight, you have an opportunity to craft cards from your hand using workshops. Oh, that went a little too fast. The, the cost to craft a card is shown in the wooden board below its suit. So this is the suit. And I talked about this before, but uh, the suit matches the clearings. So the bird icon is a wild and can be used for any clearing. All right. And the crafting cost of this one is two foxes. So I'd have to have... Okay, each workshop contributes its clearings suit towards paying crafting costs. For example, you could craft this arms trader if you had two workshops and fox clearings. You can have two in the same clearing as long as it's um, a fox clearing in that case. You can craft Smuggler's Trail since you have Workshop in a mouse clearing and it costs one. Okay. So we've used this one. I wouldn't be able to use it again. I can only use them once. So we got a point from that. One out of 12. After crafting, the Marquee can take three actions. Uh, the marquee also scores points when building, so let's build. You can only build, place buildings, place buildings in clearings you rule with available building slots. Not sure why it wants me to build way down here, but let's choose that. And workshop. Workshops allow you to craft cards in your hand. Right, we already crafted that. Sawmills, oh, okay. Sawmills produce wood to help you build more buildings. And recruiters, as you know, help you recruit warriors. Let's build a recruiter to bolster your defenses. Okay, that makes more sense now. We've built a recruiter down here too. We have one up there and one down here. Now that there are two recruiter buildings, you can recruit two warriors with a single recruit action. Move your warriors to the front lines to defend against the Eerie. You may now move any number of warriors using one march action. Let's move two. Okay. Remember, when you choose to march, you may take two moves. Use the second move Keep closing in on the Eerie. This is a bit aggressive, but we'll we'll go with it. <laughs> to move, you must rule either the clearing you are moving from or moving to. This can make it tricky to move deep into enemy territory without a substantial army. Makes sense, right? During evening, um, when this screen goes darker, you draw one card. You can draw additional cards um, with this icon by having more recruiters on the map. Let's review the phases of your turn. Okay. So during the bird song, right, we put we place a wood token at every sawmill, and that's it. For the daylight. 
we can we first craft any card in our hands if we as long as we have the uh, workshops in order to do that and then we can take up to three actions which is battle march recruit build and overwork um, overwork is discarding a card that matches this like the suit matches that of the clearing where a wood shop is and then you can make another wood token um, and then an evening draw a card plus one for each of this token earned on the recruiter track then discard down to five so as as you can see here these icons they're really tiny but if I was to build a third recruiter or a fifth recruiter then I can start um, drawing extra cards during the evening. The Marquis de Cat is an upstart. The lineage of the Erie Dynasties will surely retake the forest. I'm not going to explain it. Oh, okay, they're going to explain it. I guess I'll just read all of these. <laughs> The Erie are assigning actions to their decree. Each faction has unique capabilities and their own way of taking actions. The Erie will not look like much yet, but their ever-growing decree will allow them to take more and more actions each turn, so long as their leader stays in power. So they recruited, moved, they found the weak link in our defense. Prepare to fight. And now they fight us. So we did take one of them down with us. They've removed us from this clearing. And they've built a roost, which gives them a point. You may have lost the fight, but as long as your keep stands we can heal fallen warriors <clears throat> with field hospitals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Discard a card that matches the suit of the clearing where your warriors were defeated or return them to the keep. We can discard this one and we get a warrior that comes straight out at our... Um... You can review special abilities unique to your faction like field ho hospitals by tapping on your avatar. We have Field Hospital. When a warrior dies, you may spend a matching card to return them to the keep. Matching card in the uh, location that they died. Um, and in the keep, only you can place pieces in the clearing where the keep token is. Don't retaliate just yet. Build two more buildings to keep gaining VP. I think one thing that I appreciate about this game, so we don't have anything to craft, um, we only have the one workshop, and we need one bunny to build this, and two foxes to build this, or to craft this one, and at the moment we only have one mouse, so we skip, build another building of your choice. Okay, um, we might want another recruiter. But it would cost two wood. And at the moment, we only have one wood. So we might want to build another um, sawmill. Let's place it back here where it's safe. That gave us a point. You can see the points here. So the first ones out obviously are zero. The workshops give you two, two, three, four, five points. Anywhere you see this kind of icon with a number, that's how many points you get when you uh, place this token out onto the board. You could use more wood for building. Let's use overwork, push a sawmill to produce more. Okay. To overwork, you must discard a card matching the suit of one of your sawmills. 
So we have two sawmills, one here in Fox and one here in Mouse. Uh, cards in the uh, blue suit or the bird suit act as a wild and can be placed, uh, can be used in place of any other suit. Let's. Hmm. Let's do this one. And we'll put a, another one here, I guess. It doesn't really matter. But to, you have to keep in mind... Excellent. You have enough wood to make another building. You may spend any wood on the map connected to the clearing you wish to build in. So long as they are connected by cl clearings you rule. That's exactly what I was just about to say. Build a second building to complete your goal. Ah, I see. It wanted me to build two buildings this turn. Um, let's build here in the fox, I think. We want a workshop. That'll give us two points. I want to build or craft this, so I need another workshop in a, a fox location. Foxes, fox locations are over here. So I might want to build there, but have your avatar for more building in. Right. As you build more of a particular building type, its cost increases along with the VP it earns you. So now each of these cost two to build, instead of one here. You're now out of actions. By discarding a bird card, you can take another action. Oh, so it wants us to discard the card. Looks like you haven't recruited yet this turn. Let's do so with your final action. Fair enough. One there, one there. Ooh, an ambush card. I think it's going to make me use it. More warriors arrive each day. War the Eerie will use them to crush your pitiful fo uh, forces. Yeah. Birds have fallen into a trap. You have a fox ambush card you can play. Use it now to destroy two attackers. Uh, an ambush. These cats are more clever than I thought. So two die before the battle, and then we roll. So two for two. Um, we didn't get to kill any more in the battle, but we did take two away from their... Uh, uh, before the battle took place. Continue scoring points to defeat the Eerie by destroying roosts, constructing buildings, and crafting items that reward VP. So you get a point for removing roosts, in this case. Okay, I don't know why it zoomed in over there, but... Um, there is a zoom out. You can zoom out further, and you can see the whole board, and it doesn't move around. And I, I, I quite like it that way more and this way, but um, we'll continue. Uh, we have no cards. Well, we have no cards to craft, but we have no cards. Choose an action. Well. So something we can do is we know that they need to battle. Oh, I, maybe I shouldn't talk about that. We'll, we'll get into that on a, uh, the Dynasty. Um, but that shows what their turns are. Uh, march, build. We should probably build. New building. Let's do that. I'm 
Let's build back here where it's safer. Uh, let's get another recruiter. That way we'll get another card in our hand at the end of the round. Or at the end of my turn. It's a couple more points. Let's continue to recruit. So we get three now. One here. One here. And down there. So now we're, we're building up some good defense here. Um, and I want to mark. So we'll march one more back to here. Um, and one... We could go for that. That might be a good idea, actually. Let's move from here to here. We really need to start bolstering our defenses. They could get through and start destroying our, our uh, buildings back here. zero unfortunately and then they built so we definitely need to be removing them but so in the board game it, it makes more sense but any cardboard pieces so all of the warriors are wood and then these roosts these uh, buildings here these are all cardboard pieces including even the uh, the keep that's cardboard even though it's not a technically a building that you can build um, but the cardboard pieces you you get a point oh it's suggesting the field hospital you get a point for removing it from there so we could move here kill him and remove that and we'd get a point for removing the cardboard piece the building off um, it's a mouse but I'd rather use that for crafting, so we're going to skip that. So the crafting phase, we can craft the mouse in a sack. And we get a point for that. And now we need four points, so... So... Recruiting might be a good option moving and attacking we could also continue to build let's take a look at what we could build here uh, we get two points for building a sawmill and two points for building a workshop just the tutorial and, and I think a little bit too much um, let's let's first let's first do a move and I'm gonna move everything I've got here I hope they don't have an ambush card here but we do have one more movement let's move to here okay now let's fight this uh, in this clearing. We don't have an ambush. And we rolled a three. They rolled a three, but that's dropped to a one. So we did remove. We killed the, uh, the warrior, and then we get a point for taking down the roost. Nice work taking down that roost. Keep attacking roost and placing buildings to reach your VP goal. This card, a matching card. Um, in that case, yeah, we'll we'll discard that to get a get our warrior back back here. And we have one more action. I 
say let's go for a build action. I think that'll be pretty smart to need to build. Uh, I don't think I want to build here. Let's build here. here. No, we'll build right there. And we'll take another uh, workshop. Or, uh, workshop? That's not what I said. Sawmill. They've gone into turmoil because they couldn't continue their turn. There's a lot of bad things that happen with that, but uh, I can't go into what that means at the moment. I'll I'll get into that when we when we do the bird tutorial. So we can craft and we'll do that, and that way um, we've won. And the game just immediately ends. There's no finishing your turn. Nobody else gets a turn. When you hit the, the goal, um, it's they said at the beginning it's typically, or it's 30 points in a normal game. Um, and in this way, we hit the, the goal was 12 points to make it a shorter tutorial game. Um, but um, yeah, so that's not bad at all. We've, we've hit 12 points, the game ends, and we've completed the tutorial. Um, there are more here, I think. Let's just keep going. We'll go with the birds now and we can learn how to play as the bird faction. The cats chose this corner, giving me this corner. The proud Eerie dynasties which wish to reclaim the glory of their once great aristocrac uh, aristocracy. Aristocracy. Uh, I can't say that. Uh, aristocracy. There we go. And retake the woodland from the Marquis. They score each turn by building and protecting roosts in the woodland. Begin with one roost and six warriors. Roosts are the Eerie's only building type. They are used to craft cards from your hand, recruit warriors, and score VP each turn. Haka! We'll need a, lo uh, a leader who can expand our avian empire. Let's select the despot, since he will allow us to build from turn one. The Eerie must follow the official decree each turn. Each column of the decree is associated with a different action. So you can see here, recruit is zero. We don't get to do any recruiting um, with this decree. Move, so we get to move from a matching clearing. Uh, bird is wild still. Uh, battle, we don't get to battle. And build, we build in a uh, wild clearing. move so our leader came with move and build that's that's what the leader uh, comes with each turn we must add one or two cards to our decree only one card added may be a bird card let's add a mouse I don't I don't really want to I want to add the bird and it's saying recruit okay so as your decree grows you can do more and more each turn. So it only wanted us to do one, but we can put a second card in there. So this is the decree down here. You can see that it looks very different the, uh, compared to what the cat's board looks like down at the bottom, the UI. So when you assign cards to your decree, only their suit applies. If you want to use the card's effects, you must save it for the crafting phase. During bird song, you may craft cards from your hand using roosts. So there's no workshops now, there's no uh, sawmills, there's none of that. You just have roosts. So it's a bit more streamlined for, for crafting and building and things like that. However, the um, it's a different way of doing it. Okay. Each roost contributes the suit of its clearing 
transport paying costs much like the marquee. The roost is in a mouse clearing will allow you to craft sappers. This card will come in handy if you are attacked. We can build sappers. Sappers is now an ability that we get to keep now, so it just goes off to the side. In a battle as a defender, you may discard this to deal an extra hit. During daylight, your decree is resolved from left to right. Recruit a warrior and a roost matching the suit of your decree assignment. So because it's a mouse, we have to choose a mouse. We, now we don't have any other roost, so it's pretty straightforward. We just click on that, that one. Bird assigned to a decree can be used in any clearing. Yep. Move three warriors to the box clearing below. Three warriors allow you to, to maximize the hit potential of your die roll in battle. Fair enough. We skip the battle action because we do not have any cards assigned to the battle column of your decree. And then we finally get to build our second roost. At the end of your, uh, at the start of evening, you score points, victory points for your roosts. Select your avatar for more detail. The roost track shows your progress toward retaking forest. The more roosts you have, the more VP you score each turn. So each turn, if I was to have one, two, three, four roosts, then I would gain three points. Um, don't gain these points until the end of your turn. These bird brains think they can retake the forest, not on our prowl. It does go a bit quickly. You, you, um, but because we know how the cats work, it's it's going to just perform its actions in the order that it sees fit. Um, our goal at the moment is just to have three roosts, so we want to build another roost. New day, new opportunity to add to your decree. Let's add a card to recruit so we can get more warriors each turn. So it's suggesting the, um, the fox because we have a mouse and a fox location, uh, we can recruit in both of them, but just once. Each turn you may also assign a second card to your decree. Assign a mouse to the battle column so we can fight marquee and mouse clearings. I don't like the idea of that, but okay. Nothing to craft this turn, no matter your disdain for trade limits your reward for crafting items to a single point. Trade, like many things, is quite literally beneath you. We'll take a look at that here. So, the other ability is Disdain for Trade. When crafting items, you only score one point. Now, there are leaders, there is a leader that, um, that gets rid of that, but we chose the Despot. Choose a clearing to recruit warriors. So we have to recruit in a fox and in a mouse. Fox, it can be in any order, it doesn't matter which order it is. Move three warriors into the mouse clearing with your opponent's recruiter set up battle. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, okay, we'll move here. Move three warriors. Yeah, we just want to move three. Foul smell hangs in the air. There's a lot of puns in this game. Uh, the eerie must be approaching. Time to fight. Make those dirt dwellers tremble in the presence of your aerial warriors. So we have to fight in a mouse clearing. Okay, two and one. 
we didn't get to take out the recruiter. But we now uh, hold the clearing, see, by our flag. So they still have buildings here, but we own it. What a glorious battle. What must rule a clearing? Uh, we must rule a clearing to place a roost there. Warriors and buildings in a clearing contribute to who rules it. The Erie always wins ties. Typically, if there is a tie, then there is no, uh, there's no owner. We'll build there. Draw an additional card uh, during evening for every three roosts you have in play. Because we have two, uh, three roosts, then we have two. I'm going to take back warrior. Fight us back here. Just a choice. Now, okay. Select the sappers card you created to take out an additional enemy warrior. So, they took us both out, but we can take both of them out as well. Did kill our um, uh, roost, but that just gives us an opportunity to build here again. We can't build two roosts in the same location. Feel turmoil approaching, but you must add to the decree each turn, no matter what. Make an assignment now. Just don't worry too much about where. So we'll keep Sapper. Um, okay. We'll put it. We'll put it into recruit because then I'll be able to use it immediately. It says don't worry about it, but. Uh, it's pretty good. We'll can we'll bring sappers back in for to uh, craft, and let's recruit here and here. And now I can't. Um, there's no clearings to recruit in that uh, to recruit in that match the decree. Continue to enter turmoil. So because we have to place one into um, a fox clearing uh, recruit sorry but we have no fox clearings that we own then we can't uh, do it so we have to go into turmoil squawk we've fallen into turmoil because we couldn't perform all actions in our decree I keep saying it and then it comes up so I'll, I'll hold back and if something is missed I'll say something those uh, Malevolent Marquis destroyed the only roost in a fox clearing last turn, leaving you with no fox clearings to recruit. During turmoil, discard all the cards in your decree and lose one point for each discarded bird card. You then select a new leader and proceed to eat. Ouch, we just lost all of our points. Choose a leader. So this one is the one I was mentioning before. Builder, move, and recruit. Ignore your disdain for trade when you craft. Let's go with... Let's go with uh, Charismatic. That puts one into recruit and one into battle. Avoiding turmoil requires careful placement of cards to your decree. Try to match suits to the clearing to the clearings you plan to interact with. Bird cards may lose you VP during turmoil, but they offer flexibility that can help prevent it from happening. We have two roosts, so that was the end of our turn. Like you pick a new leader, that's it. You know, 
Yeah, let's use it. This way, you do kill off their golden cat there. Uh, so next round, or for my turn, I can easily take out that uh, recruiter station. You look ready to take it from here. Destroy enemy buildings, craft cards, and build to protect Roost to score 10 points and complete the scenario. If you're having trouble deciding what card suits to assign to your decree, you can always minimize it and remove your maps. So drop it down here, take a look at the map. Once you have a better idea of a board position, you can re-expand your decree and assign cards with more confidence. Right. Let me let me do that now. Um, we have here one mouse. So it might be in best interest to either put it in a move. I don't think we want to put it into build because we won't be able to build in a mouse for quite some time. Um, yeah. So let's put it into move. We know that we'll be able to move from uh, this one or this one, as we're recruiting there as well. So we don't have anything to craft. Let's move on. Use a clearing to recruit warriors. So the thing about uh, this one, the uh, I guess bald eagle. You place two warriors, not one, each time you recruit. So now I get to place, <clears throat> um, let's see, two warriors. Sorry about that, my voice was going. Um, two warriors, let's place it here. One, two. Now we get to move uh, from a mouse clearing I say we move from here to one of these locations both bunnies. Um, let's move to this one. Let's just move. Let's move two. I'm not too worried about them attacking. Um, and now we have to attack. We should just take care of this recruiter right now. It's defenseless. So no matter what we roll, I rolled three, then it gets plus one because they're defenseless goes away we get a point for that we only have two roosts still brutal tactics in battle as attacker may deal an extra hit but defender scores a point Oof. Getting a, a good chance here. They already have seven points. It's interesting that they. Okay, don't bite off more than you can chew. Remember, if you're ever unable to perform an action assigned to your decree, your flock will fall into turmoil. It's interesting that they uh, keep moving pieces here. Um, kind of annoying. I don't know if it's so that they can move down to here and try and get up in here, but uh, let's put one into build, though. I'm not sure if I'm, if it's the first to 10. Oh, it says the first player to 30 wins. I just need to get 10. Okay. That's a little bit less scary then. Um, 
I think we really we need to get more more uh, birds out. So let's recruit more. No cards to craft. Next. Put a couple more here. A couple more here. And let's get. We need to move from a mouse so we can move from either one of these. I don't want to go here. I kind of want to continue this um, direction. There's another mouse clearing down here and here, though. Um, actually, let's let's go here just so that I can own it. Let's just move a couple guys there. And then choose to battle here. Okay, not bad. Even if we lose the battle, it doesn't matter. It's, we're still performing the the battle action, so it, it it doesn't. If we lose a battle, it doesn't mean that we um, go into turmoil. It's okay. To lose battles, as long as we are battling, that's all that matters. So I'm okay with losing from time to time. Uh, we really need to get some more points, though, right? We're getting a lot of bows, or a lot of uh, bird cards. Let's start building now, okay? So, we have nothing to craft. Let's recruit here. And... Let's recruit here again. I'm gonna start going in this direction. Uh, let's move from here to here. Let's bring, let's bring the three with us. We'll attack here. Three on three, okay. But they only have two, so it can only be a two. We did end up killing them off. It's good. We now own it, and... Sure, we'll build there. Now we have three roosts. We'll be getting two points per turn and two cards. That will help us. Now you can see that the bird or the uh, the cats will gain points pretty quickly at the beginning of the game. The cats are always uh, very frequently the leader um, in points early on. The birds will come a little bit later, and if you're not careful, if you're playing against the birds and you're not careful, then they start to steamroll. That's, um, that becomes a problem. So we do now have a, um, a roost inside of a bunny clearing, so we can use this as a recruit. Could put another one, but I, I don't think that's going to be necessary. Okay, next. So we want to... No cards. We want to recruit. And then we can recruit in any two clearings. We have to recruit here because of the bunny. Matches the bunny. Um, hmm. I don't think I, I don't really need more here. Let's put some more there and two more here. So the problem now, you can see warriors in reserve. We don't have any more warriors in reserve. <laughs> so that's a problem um, because when we need to recruit and we don't have any warriors, then we go into turmoil. So we kind of want to be losing um, battles or losing warriors in battles. Uh, let's see here. Need to have a fight. So let's let's go from here to here just to have a fight. Let's just move two. 
we can build here as well. This is the only place, I don't like that it zooms in there, but it's the only place that we can fight, fight there. Ouch, but that's fine. I mean, we need to be losing some, some warriors. Um, and now I can build here. Oh no. <laughs> I'll be going into turmoil and losing quite a bit of points because of that. But I'll be gaining some of that points back because of the roost that I have out there. We have a major problem here. <laughs> uh, now this doesn't matter. Actually, let's... Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, actually, we did it. Just barely. Okay. We're about to go into turmoil, but as you can see, the game just ends. You have the points, the game's over. I think the game kind of helped me out a little bit to make sure that that uh, happened. Um, I'm not sure if that was scripted or not, but... Okay, we, we barely made it through that tutorial. I've hit an hour, so I'm going to end it here, but... Um, Marquis, Ver Marquis de Cat versus Eerie Dynasty. Now that you know the Marquis and Eerie, would you like to play a practice game between them? Uh, I'm going to end it here, and the next time we'll just continue on. This way you can really get an idea of how each of them work. I, I had actually tried this um, to just play a normal uh, game, and I ended up just explaining too much and getting hung up on... Uh, on how to explain things and went out of order and it just became a mess so I started over and just decided you know this was gonna be the best way to to play the game uh, to have a tutorial go through the tutorial so that the next time I, I play an actual game in the future um, that you know you can you can refer back to this video to learn about the cats Learn about the basics, the cats, and the birds. So, um, yeah. If you like this video, uh, then please let me know either in the comments and, or leave a like. Uh, I'd, I'd really like to continue playing this game. And if you want to learn more, you know, ask some questions in the comments. Don't don't uh, don't hesitate to uh, to contact me in the comments. I'm I'm usually pretty quick about returning uh, or replying to comments, but. Yeah, I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next time.